Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm picking up right where I left off in the last episode. Today is still January 30th, uh, 2012 for me. And when we left off, I was trying to get a user enter dollars class working. Specifically, I was trying to move the parse method out of the dollars class where it used to reside and into user enter dollars. And I had mostly done that. I was just trying to get rid of the static method and replace it with the um, the constructor and that caused a test to fail. When I took this out and replaced it with return new user enter dollars like that, very surprisingly a test in my UI failed. A completely obscure test failed. And I think it's because the type of the class has now changed. Parse used to return a valid dollars or an invalid dollars. Now it returns a user entered dollars. And that's really interesting. Um, now it could be that I haven't gotten any of these other methods implemented yet. In fact, I'll bet you it's because is valid isn't implemented yet. Um, if we go into, oops, that's not the right one. If we, Hmm. Let's look at dollars text field. Where are you? Dollars text field. Yeah, this test is looking at. I bet you we have a call that is valid in here somewhere. Nope, we don't. Um, well, I don't know what the issue is exactly, but I do know that I jumped the gun a little bit in that I was trying to replace this parse method without realizing I'd completely forgotten about all these other methods that need to be implemented. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish that up real quick. I also realized that I forgot to put the word test on here. Um, sorry about that. Those of you who commented three episodes ago about that mistake, I just now realized it. And since I'm recording all these episodes together, I haven't seen your comments yet. So, um, okay, yeah, that's all good. Good, good, good. Okay, so, um, we need to just do some basics here. Let's go ahead and look at our valid dollars tests again. Um, yeah, I mean, all of these are just gonna use the underlying method. Um, just trying to think about how to test that appropriately. Let's see. Well, let's just do it one little piece at a time. We've got, we'll come back to render. Let's start out with is valid. Yeah, is valid. I'm going to take these out and put them up here. I think it might be handy. I think I learned recently that it is okay to write the code this way, so I'm not going to do a setup method. I'll just instantiate just like that. Um, oh, and did I not undo here? There we go. I think I've said this before, but what I love about test-driven development is not that I write perfect code, but it allows me to, be, me to be pretty sloppy. You know, I'm just doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, and because I'm using test-driven development, even though I'm being pretty sloppy in my coding, um, the results are still really good. And I feel like letting myself be a little sloppy in my coding actually allows me to go faster and, and sort of keep my, my mind in the place where it needs to be rather than taking forever to really carefully think about everything. I just let the test tell me if I've done it right. 
Um, so I know watching that can probably be a little disconcerting, but I, I feel like from a program perspective, it really helps keep the flow going. So um, anyway, we were going to do is valid next, I think. And for these, I just need to test that they're wiring up properly. Um, so I want to assert true that dollars one a is valid. Um, I think right now that will fail. Yeah. Um, but it is easily fixed. All of these are just going to be simple calls to the backing dollars. Plus. You know, this might not work, actually. This probably won't work. Um, can add, so we need to be able to say that we should be able to add um, two user entered dollars. But we should also be able to add. Um, a user entered dollars and a non-user entered dollars and vice versa and see that work. So that's going to take a little bit more coding effort. Um, it looks like we don't have a dollars two yet. I think I took that one out for some reason. So let's put that back in. Okay, and now, yeah, expected three was null. That is appropriate, but I don't know that this is going to work when I use the backing dollars like that. Yeah, it's not going to work because valid dollars makes the assumption that yeah we've got this amount class that returns yeah yeah it return it assumes it's a valid dollars and that's appropriate but it's not going to work for us um, so let's go ahead and uh, do something similar here rather than doing what we need to do is we need to say if dollars is an instance of user enter dollars we want to return back in dollars dot plus user enter dollars dollars otherwise we'll return back in dollars plus regular dollars case we want to say yeah, dot backing dollars but um, yeah it's gonna be a bit painful but we can just do it in the same way that it was handled in the other case invalid dollars Okay, so now we need to handle the opposite case, which is that addition. Hmm. 
I think I think the way we did it with invalid dollars, we actually put the test for valid dollars inside of invalid dollars. Is that the way we want to deal with it here? I don't know what I, the combinatorial explosion that we're getting here is kind of bugging me. Um, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and just type the test in here. Um, so we should be able to add two user inner dollars. We should also be able to add user enter dollars to um, valid dollars. And we've already coded that. I jumped the gun a little bit, so that should work. Yep. And we should be able to add add user your dollars to invalid dollars. I think that will work. But then we have to do it in the other direction too. We have to be able to add, should be able to add valid dollars to user enter dollars. that will fail. I'm not sure what will happen. Let's see what happens. Yep, it doesn't like it because it's not a valid dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and take this assertion out of here and put it here. Same error. And then here, we are going to say plus, if uh, this time out plus amount dollars, right? So, huh, I'm not sure how to deal with that. If, um, I mean, ultimately, what we need to do is, is invert it again. If we say dollars, is an instance of user enter dollars, then we can just return dollars plus this. That's not going to work as a general rule, though. Yeah. solve our immediate problem, but it doesn't solve it in the in the general case. Yeah, it doesn't solve it in the general case, but um, yeah, we'll come back to that. And we also need to do that same thing here. Um,
All right. A uh, little over time here. Let's wrap this up. This will probably fail, I would say, but it actually passes. Um, probably because invalid dollars is a degenerate case and has a really simple plus. Yeah, it just always returns negative. And I think that's okay in this case. All right, well, that's all the time we have this for this episode. I think I'm going to take a break, um, upload these videos, get some comments on them, and uh, before I record another patch. Uh, but I will pick up with my next episode on the normal schedule, I think. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I will catch you next time.